In the studio with us now is registered dietitian Virginia Kale with Prairie Mountain Health. Uh, thank you for coming in studio today. You're welcome. Hello. Now, can we start off with like a, a definition of diet and nutrition? Uh, I'm sure those are two terms that come up in your <laughs> practice. What's the difference? Ah, um, well, you may have heard the ex- most of us have heard the expression "We are what we eat." And we know that what goes into our mouth is what becomes our body. So um, the diet part is the food, the stuff that you put into your mouth, what you plan, and the nutrition part is what ends up happening to your body with those nutrients. The people that you're dealing with in your practice, have they been reporting any issues or problems with their diet and nutrition as uh, directly related to the nature of this, the whole COVID situation that's been going on since March? Do you know, I, there's been a handful of people that have, yes. Um, the, I would think probably the biggest impact has been our, my contact with them has changed drastically. So some people certainly are experiencing their eating more, eating differently. Um, but in terms of the work that I do with them, it's usually by phone now, which is a new way of doing things, or a video conference if they have a device with camera. Um, but for what it, whoever I work with, I find out what their current food and living situation is like, um, help them apply the evidence-based guidelines around their health condition to come up with small, doable changes that they're willing and able to make in the current environment or in any environment they're living in. So with the challenges that are faced to our health and different dimensions of our health, right? You have our physical, mental, spiritual health. And I think a lot of those dimensions of health are challenged by this COVID-19 situation. Can you? Oh, it, definitely. Could you tell me what do you think, uh, how does nutrition and diet contribute to our overall well-being? Maybe just beyond the, uh, you know, in, in the physical sense. For sure. I mean, um I actually read something recently about Canadian Nutrition Society pointing out that even just basic access to food has changed. Um, We have, there have been job loss, there's been less money available to buy food for people. There have been changes in agriculture even, so some stuff is available, less available than it was before. Um, People are isolating at home and avoiding the grocery store because of the fear of being exposed to the virus. So um, all of those factors impact how they I guess, respond to the world around them, to their friends and family, to um, their church communities, if they're part of a church community. Um, they just People are staying at home and doing less out there. So that's not easy on any of us to be less connected with people. Um, I like how they switched actually from talking about social isolation to making it a physical isolation. You can still stay connected socially with people, um, but not necessarily physically the same way we were used to. And that affects our, like you say, the the mental health, the spiritual health, all part of us. Yeah, the idea that even the way we access our food is becoming uh, more challenged or put under stress due to the whole COVID situation. Um, In your practice with Prairie Mountain Health, are you aware of any uh, resources or programs uh, in terms of the the issues that we're now encountering with just a matter of uh, getting the right food? For sure. Everywhere across uh, Prairie Mountain Health, there are food banks in various communities, and so people can uh, find out where they are locally. Um, there's another one that's that I'm aware of here in Dauphin called Under One Roof, which is providing a hot meal. Um, during For a number of months, they've been doing it only um, by delivering meals to folks' homes. But I think starting the this month, actually, a couple in a couple of weeks, they're going to be doing it in person um, again. So at the United Church in town, they invite people to come. I think they're having a maximum of 50 between 4.30 and 6.30. They get a hot meal. They have some resources that they're connected with. Um, the Friendship Center has some good resources in Dauphin as well. And lots of communities have that. Um, so that, that'd be one place where people can go. What work is done to educate uh, people in the general public that understand that the right diet, the right nutrition is going to lead to better health outcomes? But how do we really get in touch with that information? Uh, what resources are there to help us learn more about nutrition itself and how we can better change the way we deal with food to improve our overall health? 
Probably anybody that has a specific health condition can go to that, that particular website. So if there's lung disease, which of course is a key one when, when you think of COVID-19 as a respiratory illness, um, so lung.ca is a website people can go to and there's information about eating well on it for that condition. The Diabetes Association, diabetes.ca has another really good resources. Um, and then the, uh, what was the third one I was thinking of? The uh, um, Heart Foundation, so heartandstroke.ca similarly has information specific to those health conditions. Um, then there are, I mean, our, our website, Prairie Mountain Health, has food and nutrition links on it on the website, so people can go to that website as well. Um, there are some really good resources with Health Canada. Um, WHO actually has some really good ones as well. I saw some that I liked that are more accessible, I think, almost to Ottawa Public Health, um, .ca. So lots of, lots of organizations are trying to go beyond the clients they see in one-on-one and make available um, information more available generally to people. Virginia Kale, registered dietitian with Prairie Mountain Health here with us in studio. Virginia, underlying conditions aside, uh, just for, you know, the general population, what role does proper eating and proper nutrition play in our overall health? Huge, huge uh, impact. Um, so most of us have heard that expression that we are what we eat and we know what goes into our mouth is what becomes our body. And so for our bodies to do what we want them to do every day, the nutrition or nutrients that we feed them is really key. Um, so when, when I eat only a few types of foods, say potato chips and pop, or only pizza and burgers, or even only rice and beans, um, there'll be nutrients missing for rebuilding the billions of cells in my blood, my bone marrow, my hormones, my organs, my skin, and my hair. So in addition to those, that basic food becomes me idea, there's the impact of the process of eating on my well-being. So we talked earlier about you know getting the money and getting to the grocery store, that kind of thing, who I'm with, what my mental state is when I'm eating. Um, all those factors in, 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 um, affect that. And maybe you can tell I love food and the science behind it. Um, some of the changes I've seen in tr- nutrition knowledge or nutrition science um, over the years since my biochemistry degree have been in the areas of immunity, genetics, the gut microbiome, and inflammation. And so nutrition science, just like climate science or pandemic science, um, grows. And uh, each new discovery helps to add to our basic knowledge and helps guide our choices to be healthier than the people who lived before us. So you would say that uh, diet nutrition has a big role to play in our immune system function, correct? Yes, definitely. Now, what are some actionable tips? We understand the importance of having an immune system in any time. Obviously, during the COVID situation, uh, it sounds like a pretty good line of defense to do what you can do, control the things you can with the food you put in your body to bolster and strengthen your immune system. What are the actionable, what's the conventional wisdom for experts right now in you know, immune system uh, management with the way we're eating? Um, there's two things. One, one is the stress, again, related around the eating. So if people can find ways to, to relax, to uh, get back down to center, to be regularly in a place where they're, they're content and happy, um, that makes a huge difference for how our bodies will actually use the foods that we eat. And there, there's been, there is currently research being done around our immune system. We need both the macronutrients, the protein, the fat, the carbohydrates, and the micronutrients, so the vitamins and minerals, vitamin A, C, D, E, B6, B12, folic acid. Those are all really important, um, as well as the minerals, iron, zinc, copper, and selenium. So there isn't one particular magic way of eating or one food. Um, so the, if people are interested to learn more about how to, where to get those particular nutrients, there are places you can go to, to analyze what your food intake is, chronometer, um, the, my fitness pal, some of them have those kind of options available. But I think the bottom line, the, the idea is to consume and to choose more often the nutrient-dense foods, the foods that have lots of vitamins and minerals, lots of variety of colors, Um, those are the things that can make a a difference to your overall immune system. 
And that will typically be those kind of foods that will have that diverse amount of nutrients and give your body all the wide range of things it needs to be operating as well as it can. Have your immune exactly. system operating as well as it can. What kind of foods are we talking? Because it's probably not too much relying on fast food. You mentioned the pop and the chips. We want to diversify, but what yeah. are like some good general guiding principles for diversifying our diet to have the optimal immune system function and optimal overall sense of well-being and energy? Well, and and I, I think I'll answer that with a uh, focus on what we can do during COVID, because if we're still living in this situation, we have to be careful with not going out too often, only have one person to the grocery store, that kind of thing. How do we make our kitchens a really good uh, source of healthy food? And one of the things that um, the Ottawa Public Health Association had a list of essential supplies, focusing on things like the fresh vegetables that have a longer shelf life. So the beets and carrots and, and parsnips and potatoes and sweet potatoes and cabbage and squash and onions and fresh fruit that has a longer shelf life, the apples and oranges, um, frozen vegetables, canned vegetables and fruit, dried fruit, all those things are really helpful to have around. Um, grains like rice and quinoa and pasta and that are fortified, um, frozen and canned meats, um, eggs, milk powder, um, canned and dried beans, chickpeas, lentils, that kind of thing. So lots of foods that can be bought in small amounts as you need them or when you shop, but will be there for, for weeks and months without having to replenish them. As Because like you're saying, during this COVID situation, let's maybe orient our food strategy, our plan to maybe ways we can avoid going to the grocery store exactly. so often. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. And then also, I would say, for, again, helping the communities and survive this economic challenge is do like a once a week kind of order out, uh, choose a restaurant in town and have them deliver or, or pick up, um, because that can help all of us if, we, if we're, we're part of this together being in the communities. So let's work together to, to get through it. Virginia Kale, registered dietitian with Prairie Mountain Health, here with us on uh, Your Health and Wellness, our month-long feature here on 730 CKDM. Virginia, when it comes to, we all have so much to learn when it comes to nutrition and our health. There's so much information out there, but we know if we can absorb enough of that information, it can make a huge impact on the quality of our lives day to day, whether that's managing underlying issues we might have or just in general, energy level, feelings of optimism to getting out of bed and doing what you have to do, supporting your body with uh, you know, the food you put in your body. Um, when you're dealing with your clients, what are some of these like concrete actionable tips and advice that you're able to give that you have found to be effective for us? Yeah, so what I do with folks is I'll, I'll sit down or chat on the phone with them about um, what is life like for you now? What are you eating? What are some things that, that you find challenging? And then help them choose um, something small. It could be as easy as one more serving your fruit or vegetable each day or adding one tablespoon of ground flax seed um, to their cereal or salad once, once or twice a day, um, sitting down to plan their meals for the week and um, have an idea what they're going to do the next four or five days, or even just one day at a time, what's, gonna, what's on my menu for today or tomorrow. Uh, could, be, could be on the other area that also impacts health is deciding to call up someone in their COVID bubble to go walking with or get back to those weights or treadmill that they have in the basement or in the house um, or find an online exercise program because there are lots of those available as well. Um, for others, it might actually be more important to carve out or schedule in 15 minutes twice a week to do a meditation or a prayer or read something other than COVID news or turn off all screens half an hour before they go to bed so they can sleep better. In other words, nourishing themselves without food uh, with a focus on the mental, spiritual and, and emotional health as well. If we're able to manage other aspects of our health area, does it kind of support, do they kind of play into one another? Definitely. If my exercise is, is routine, is, is strong, and I've stayed committed, it, sometimes that'll support a, a better diet as well, right? I think so. I think so. If, if, and, and every, I think what's really important for people to realize or to remember is that change doesn't happen overnight. We can't change everything today and tomorrow we're going to be all better. But 
like any habit, 15 times of repeating it, then it becomes a habit. So that means about two weeks if it's every day. So if you choose one small thing to do this week, and then next week choose one more small thing to do, then if gradually your, your sense of being in control and, and being able to decide what you're going to do with your day and how you're going to feel in the morning and what you're going to accomplish in the day um, can improve gradually. And we're always learning, right? There's so much information when it comes to health to absorb and to apply in your own life. There's also so much individual differences between people. You have to figure out what works for you. So it's kind of a twofold exploration. What is the conventional wisdom? What do people like Virginia Kale have to say when it comes to health experts advising different aspects of managing your health. Then you also kind of over time figure out what works for you. And exactly. you know, me personally, Virginia, I've lost 80 pounds. I had a sort of a weight loss journey and it was really a long learning process, but gradually I just figured out what was working for me. And I've arrived at a place where I feel like my diet is much better. My exercise routine, all these things have kind of gained enough uh, momentum and they've been refined enough to where I feel like I'm operating and I feel much better, right? Yep. Well, and, and like you say, I think the the um, each person's different and when they're ready to start a, a, a program of change or even just to take on one change is different. So when they're ready and when they have the supports in place from family and friends um, and someone to be accountable to, that might be the time for them to, to go ahead and take that. In terms of... Um, the information we're hearing from experts, there's always going to be that information out there, and there might be even um, stuff that, that the conventional or the, or the traditional sources are saying that's different. And so each person has to decide um, who they're going to trust and where the information is coming from and what applies to their life, what they can, what they can make doable for themselves. Virginia, uh, I'll ask you, uh, I'll boil it down to a simple question. At the end of the day, the the motivation to learn more about our nutrition and diet and maybe the attempt, the effort we can put in to try to change that for the better. What's the benefit? What is the what, what are you going to benefit from by changing your diet and really trying to improve it? I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning. You are what you eat. So if you are able to improve the choices you make each day and what food goes into your body, your body, your brain, your organs are going to function better. You will feel better. You'll look better. And all of those things um, will mean that our communities can get better as well. Finding a dietitian. Okay, I've just heard the Virginia Kale feature on 7:30 CKDM. I, you know what? This, I feel like yes, Talk I do to her. feel like yeah, if, uh, yeah. <laughs> now. What's that process us? like right. of uh, maybe seeking further, going a step further for some professional consultation here? Yeah, the, the Prairie Mountain Health has, uh, like I mentioned, the website prairiemountainhealth.ca has uh, food nutrition links. Um, there's also a, um, a, a link to the programs in primary care, primary health care, that range from... Um, you know, teen clinics to um, mental health to our program, the Chronic Disease Education Program. And we have a toll-free number people can call, one 509 7852 and they can learn about the programs we're offering, the classes that are being offered, as well as um, self-refer to the program to see our dietitian or nurse educators. Virginia, I know that there's a lot of talk about how food and proper diet can improve your mood. Um, I know me personally, when my diet, when I find a way to get my diet under control, I have more energy, I feel lighter, I feel more clear-headed. Uh, overall, I would say the mood is much better. Now, can you talk about what is the conventional wisdom when it comes to managing our diet and improving our mood and the way we feel? Some of the basics around that actually have to do with um, the carbohydrate, the macronutrient, the carbohydrates, because glucose is basically brain power. 20% um, of all the energy used in the body is by the brain. The brain kind of controls what the rest of the body is doing all the time, so it needs the fuel to, to handle its job all day. Um, then there's the whole aspect about comfort eating that sometimes we will eat to improve our mood, thinking that certain foods will improve that. And those probably are more to do with the learned behaviors that we have around food as a, and our relationship with food. Um, we're actually offering a course um, regularly called Craving Change that deals with exactly with that. Not about what you're eating, but why you're eating the way you are. 
Um, so again, call that toll-free number to find out more about that one. But um, there have been research around caffeine and the, how that can affect your mood, your energy level. And then the nutrients um, that sometimes can be missing are iron that can reduce your energy level because of the oxygen required by all your body to function well. Um, so again, go back to those uh, red meats and pulses, the, the cheap um, protein sources of beans, um, fortified cereals. And then folate and selenium. Again, those minerals I mentioned before about um, found in, in organ meats and green vegetables and nuts and seeds. So lots of things can affect our how our minds are functioning. Um, having lots of fruits and veggies, whole grain cereals, protein foods, including oily fish. And then we'll get a really good source of good, good health in the end and a good mood. Virginia, when it comes to weight loss, uh, there's lots of different things. Exercise, diet, I guess there's two different things. Mm. <laughs> more, than, more than two. <laughs> Virginia, when it comes to weight loss, we know about exercise being something people focus on a lot, doing the crunches, what have you. What role does diet have to play when, it, when it's all said and done? Just how important is managing our diet to achieving our weight loss goals and maybe those that weight loss contributing to an overall sense of well-being, kind of helping weather the uh, the COVID storm a bit from a mm-hmm. mental health perspective. Um, you know, it's interesting that there's actually some new clinical practice guidelines that just came out around the whole uh, obesity or people living in larger bodies. And um, it's designed for people who are professionals as well as people living in larger bodies to read these guidelines. So feel free to go and find them but online. But the bottom line is that, yes, um, food and what we do physically for exercise do impact what our size is going to be. However, there's there's much more of an emphasis now on health gains over weight loss. And so just being able to um, identify what it is you want to be able to have be in a better place for yourself, whether it's being able to reach down to tie your shoes or whether it's being able to have a higher energy level in the day or whether it's being able to have a better mood, those are the focuses uh, now instead of what the scale says. So um, be focused on what it is you want to achieve and um, address that. Don't worry what the scale says. And when we start working on those health outcomes, like our energy levels, you know, eating properly, getting those nutrients, it seems like most of the time the scale will kind of follow in the direction we'd like it to. But I like what you're saying, which is the priority would be your health gains and weight loss can be more of a secondary byproduct of really addressing your overall health first and foremost. Yeah, and there's so much out there right now that's actually almost biased against people who live in larger bodies. And so I think these guidelines also address that, that we're trying to be um, more accepting of people in various Um, you know, schooling levels or sizes or language or culture. And so size is just one more human characteristic that makes us different from each other. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming in and sharing information about diet and nutrition, how that can benefit us overall, but especially during this COVID time. And, And there's certainly a lot of challenges that we face all the time, especially during COVID, when it comes to accessing the right food, having the finances to, you know, really make sure that we're eating that quality food. It certainly is tends to skew a bit easier to uh, uh, maybe not eat so healthy when the budget is tight. So we appreciate you coming in and sharing all this information. And of course, we have all the links. More details will be up on 730ckdm.com for all the resources and all the tips that we've talked about today. Uh, Virginia Kale, registered dietitian with Prairie Mountain Health. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing this information today. You're welcome. Thanks for the interest.